I'm going to speak about a phenomenological approach of intermedial visual contagion and its inactive nature. My name is Yvan Magrin Chanelou. I am a philosopher and I am an artist. I do research in philosophy with the CNRS in France. I am currently affiliated with the PRISM Laboratory in Marseille, a joint research lab between the CNRS and Aix-Marseille University that explores the relationships between art and science. I am also an affiliated scholar at Chapman University in California. As an artist, I work in the field of the performing arts, in particular in music and theatre, and I also work in the field of visual arts, in particular photography and film. I am therefore very familiar with the process of multimedial visual contagion. Visual contagion, including multimedial visual contagion, is very common in the creative process of many artists nowadays. I have been studying the creative process for many years now. I have adopted various approaches to study the creative process. I have been working in the paradigm of practice as research, which I prefer to call creation research, which consists in using my own practice as the ground for my research. This kind of approach has been developed a lot in the past couple of decades, and many theoretical background has been developed for this type of research. This approach has received many names, besides the two mentioned previously, and the various names reflect on the polymorph nature of this paradigm. But usually the main point of these approaches is to establish how to translate a practical work into new scientific knowledge. This is something that I have been working on a lot those past few years. This had led me to adopt a phenomenological approach of the creative process, that is, an approach that deals with the creative process as a lived experience. It has also led me to adopt the paradigm of inaction, developed by Francisco Varela, as providing excellent conceptual background to describing the creative process. And to adapt the technique of the explicitation interview, developed by Pierre Vermersch, as an excellent way to investigate on the phenomenology of the creative process. The explicitation interview was developed by Pierre Vermersch as a way to interrogate the subjective experience in a manner that is objective and reproducible. The explicitation interview consists in interrogating a subject about a past experience and have them describe in details a particular moment of this past experience. So we are indeed in a phenomenological paradigm since we are dealing with a past lived experience. This interview technique is a way to have access to what the subject really went through and not what they think they did, which sometimes is different. This is because during an explicitation interview, the subject is led to relieve the past experience and not just to remember it. It is called to be in evocation, a term coined by Pierre Vermersch. All the technique of the interview consists in guiding the subject towards this state of evocation and to put that back in it when they are out of it. This is exactly the same process that is used by actors who are trained in method acting, the acting technique developed at the actor studio by Lee Strasberg, except the goal is different. In acting, the goal of evocation is to trigger an emotion. In the explicitation interview, the goal of evocation is to obtain a description of the lived experience. Another interesting feature of the explicitation interview 
is that it can access the pre-reflected consciousness. That is, it can access some of the cognitive operations that are underlying the lived experience. When conducted by a skilled interviewer, the explicitation interview can lead to a thorough description of the cognitive operations involved in a particular moment of a lived experience. For instance, how the subject gets the information they need, how they make a decision, and how they act upon that decision. Now, there is one major drawback to the explicitation interview. It can only interrogate a moment that is very specific in time. In order to get a detailed description of a particular moment, including some of its cognitive features, it takes a lot of time and requires a whole interview of one hour to one hour and a half. Therefore, you cannot easily conduct many interviews on various moments of a process that is spread over time, like in the case of a creative process. It is crucial to have a good knowledge prior to an interview of the particular moment that you want to interrogate. This is usually done by conducting a few interviews without constraints to get a better understanding of the task at hand. And then to do a few more interviews where you know exactly which particular moment you want to interrogate. Another way to get a better understanding of the task at hand is to practice auto-explicitation. This is a version of the explicitation interview that you can apply to yourself through writing or dictation, for instance, and which is a good way to start exploring a process when you don't want to spend too many hours doing explicitation interviews with subjects. Auto-explicitation can also be practiced by other people than you if they are a bit familiar with the process or if you guide them through it. I have interviewed several artists about their creative process using the explicitation interview and in particular I have questioned them about moments that they themselves considered important in their process. That includes, among other things, moments when creative decisions were triggered by other works, theirs or the works of fellow artists, and in particular by images. It is very common, particularly in the field of visual arts, to be inspired by other images. Images circulate abundantly now, and whether we want it or not, we are bombarded by them continuously and that impacts our representations and influence our creative ideas. Sometimes this is done unconsciously just by being exposed to those images. Sometimes that is part of a creative process to look for images that can be an inspiration for the work at hand. A lot of these visual contagions are multimedial, that is, artists are often inspired by images outside of their medium of predilection. For instance, it's very common for a filmmaker to be inspired by a photograph or a painting. I have interrogated several artists about their creative process and in particular about moments that they considered particularly creative. Some of those moments included moments when a new creative idea was triggered by the work of someone else. Some of them were about being inspired by an image or a sequence of images. And in some cases, those images or sequences of images were coming from a different medium than the one of the artists. Those are the ones that I want to focus on in the rest of this presentation. I am therefore going to share with you some observations that I have made about those moments of intermedial visual contagion in the creative process of an artist based on the few interviews that I have transcribed that deals with such moments. The first interesting thing to notice is that there are usually two situations 
when an intermedial visual contagion happens. The first one is what I would call an unexpected intermedial visual contagion. An artist is going through an experience of attending a visual work of some sort and as they are going through the experience, it triggers an idea for a future work. To illustrate this situation, here is a quote from one of the interviews. As I watch the work, referring to a painting in a museum, a new image is forming in my mind. An image that has some of the features of the work I am watching, but also new features. And then almost immediately, I make the decision to work on a future work of the subject in the area of serial photography. What is interesting in this example is the fact that the intermedial visual contagion happened in an unexpected way while doing an activity without the aim of producing something. It also suggests that a new image formed in the mind of the subject that had some features from the work that was watched and other features that were probably the fruit of the subject's imagination. The second situation occurs with intentionality. An artist is already at work on a piece and they are looking for some ideas by watching the work of other artists. To illustrate this second situation, here is another quote from one of the interviews. I am going through the book of paintings by a very well-known painter and then I stop on one of the paintings and decide that this is the painting that is going to be used as a reference for the work on the look of a film by a filmmaker with their director of photography. Those two moments are a bit different in the sense that one is intentional and the other is not. The first situation also describes a process of morphism which is probably due to the fact that the situation was unintentional, at least consciously, and an image transformed into another one in the mind of the subject. The second situation is more about a moment of deciding which painting to use as a frame of reference, but the subject kind of already knew they wanted to use a painting from that painter. It would be interesting in that second situation to interrogate how that idea of using that painter emerged. This work is only preliminary as far as the phenomenology of intermedial visual contagion is concerned, since I don't have a lot of interviews yet that deal with a specific moment of intermedial contagion in a creative process. I was more looking at the creative process itself and let the subjects decide what was significant for them as being the essence of their creative process. The fact that some of the interviews happened to describe a process of intermedial visual contagion was a lucky accident. One would have to do a series of explicitation interviews with the specific goal of interrogating moments of intermedial visual contagions in order to get a better understanding of the phenomenology of this intermedial visual contagion process. I would like now to discuss the paradigm of inaction that, in my opinion, brings light on the creative process and which I have been investigating on for the past few years. It is totally relevant to the process of intermedial visual contagion. The inaction paradigm was developed by Francisco Varela as an extension of the paradigm of autopoiesis and was first applied to the human visual perception of colors. The inaction paradigm describes how our perceptions are shaped by our cognition while at the same time our cognition is shaped by our perceptions. In other words, it states that what we perceive 
is informed by the knowledge that we have already acquired in the past and at the same time that same knowledge is shaped by what we perceive. I have been exploring in previous and current works how inaction is a good paradigm to describe the creative process from a cognitive point of view. Indeed, the creative process is a cognitive process, which is probably more complex than the process of perceiving something, but there are many moments of a creative process that can be understood in the light of the inaction paradigm. The creative process we are involved with pushes us to do certain activities in search for information that would be relevant for the project at hand. So in a way we are doing those activities because we already have certain knowledge of what we want to accomplish and how to accomplish it. But as we go through those activities, we learn new information which in turn are transforming our knowledge about this creative project and so on. In the context of intermedial visual contagion, it provides a paradigm for how we can decide to do a particular activity. In the second example, to screen through a book with paintings by a certain painter. And as we do it, we gain information about our project to the point where we can decide on a particular painting to use as a visual reference for the work. In the second case, it's the creative project itself that is triggered by an activity we are doing, even though this activity was not triggered per se by the project itself, since the idea for it had not been formed yet, but it was still an activity done with the aim of gaining some knowledge. We could summarize those two situations seen through the prism of inaction by saying that the perception of images in our own medium or from other media is shaped by the idea of the new artistic project or the idea of starting a new project while at the same time the idea of the new artistic project is shaped by the images that are perceived. To wrap up, I have been describing how I approached the creative process from a phenomenological point of view, that is, focusing on the creative process as a lived experience. I have also explained the explicitation interview developed by Pierre Vermersch, and which I used to collect phenomenological information about the creative process. I have shared two moments of intermedial visual contagions that appeared in some of those interviews. I have then described the inaction paradigm developed by Francisco Varela and shown how it could be applied to the creative process and in particular to intermedial visual contagions. If we wanted to go further with this research, it would involve doing more explicitation interviews but this time focusing particularly on moments of the creative process already identified as moments of intermedial visual contagion. Thank you for your attention and don't hesitate to get in touch with me if you have any question or comment about this presentation. Here is my email address.